Good morning and welcome to Thursday. God bless you on your day. Today I'd like to start your day by talking to you about temptation. Now this is a subject that I am an expert in. I know very, very well what it's like to be tempted. And I'm also very, very good at tempting other people. I had a reputation when I was younger um, as a student uh, that I'm not the kind of person that does well cramming for tests at the end. I get to a point where it's like, you know, if I don't know it by now, I'm not going to know it. So I just relaxed and I oftentimes before a big exam, I would go out and, and hang out with friends and invite them to movies or do anything to, to get distracted for a while. Unfortunately, I, I tended to distract the people who do very well when they cram for last minute for tests. And uh, I found that my temptation of them didn't help their academic career, although it kind of helped mine at times. But seriously, temptation is a serious business. When you read the pages of the Bible, you hear all kinds of stories, some of them tragic, some of them awful, of people that at one point in their life may have been decent people. At one point in their life, they may have been a follower of God and yet temptation overcame them and it corrupted their heart and it destroyed their lives. You don't need to read the Bible to hear the stories of that. You see it every day in the news. You see it dramatized on TV and soap operas and, and all of the different shows that are out there. And it seems like everybody knows it. Everybody understands temptation is real. And even though we live in a world very divided when it comes to morality and what is true and what's right and wrong, almost everybody, almost universally, there is some belief in right and wrong. Whether it's on a level of justice and politics and redistributing wealth, or whether it's on that matter of personal morality and personal integrity, whether it comes to honesty or whether it comes to being frugal and wise with the way we use our money, or whether it comes to our sexual fidelity or not. It seems like there is some universal understandings, even if we don't agree on all the details, that there is good and bad. There are good choices and bad choices, to use the words of love and logic. And the reality is we are all tempted by things that are not good, not healthy. I wanted to share with you one of my favorite quotes from Martin Luther. And honestly, I'm, I'm crediting one of my pastors from childhood. I'm not sure where I first heard it, but he had this saying about temptation. He said, you can't stop birds from flying over your head, but you don't need to make them, let them make a nest in your hair. Now I'll show you the picture uh, that, that we started the video with again. So you can look at it for a moment. Whoever drew this painting had to have heard and had to have been thinking of Luther's words. But I remind you of, of those words. You can't stop birds from flying over your head, but you don't need to let them make a nest in your hair. You know, that's really where sin begins. The thought that comes through your mind that idea that maybe you've never even thought of before, but all of a sudden it's like, hmm, that's interesting. I wonder, what would it be like? Hmm. And you know, I don't know where the line is between an innocent fleeting thought and where our thought life actually becomes sinful because we confess, in, in, uh, it's one of the things I love about uh, our Lutheran heritage. When we confess, we confess that we have sinned against God by what we've done and by what we've left undone. We have sinned against God in our thoughts, in our words, and in our deeds. It's a pretty powerful, pretty all-encompassing confession there. But that sense in which we're tempted by things that are wrong and we're tempted not to do the things that are good. And those thoughts that would distract us, they come out of nowhere. And just like Luther's illustration, the birds that come and they might threaten to land in our hair, but there is a choice that we make as soon as the thought enters our mind and we become conscious of it. Do we sit there and start dwelling on it? And, and adding to it and saying, well, I wonder what this would be like. And if I did that, what would this be like? 
And this can be about greed and money and what we could do if we just had a little bit more. It can be about bitterness and envy and the jealousy that we have when we look at other people and we start those thoughts come of, well, why did they get that? Why do they deserve that special treatment? It can be about sex and it can be about the lust of our heart and of our body. And we can fantasize, an idea just pops into our head, but all of a sudden it intrigues us and we start fantasizing. We, we start imagining what that might be like and we get into so much trouble. And some of us have the self-discipline and whether it's the fear of God or the fear of our spouse or the fear of just you know screwing up and hurting too many people, that doesn't always mean that our mind is pure and that our thoughts are, are the right thoughts. Sometimes we can have all kinds of garbage going on between our ears and outwardly we can look like we've got it all together and we're doing a good job. And for most people, it's only a matter of time before those thoughts and those fantasies, the things that were the temptations where we've let the birds nest in our hair become a reality. I want to share with you a couple words of scripture from 1 Corinthians chapter 10. We're told this, be careful when you think you're standing fast lest you fall. No temptation has seized you except that which is common to all people. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can endure. And I'd like to add another scripture passage. This is from 2 Corinthians chapter 10. It says, we take every thought captive and we make it obedient to Christ. You see, our thought life, that really is the battleground. That's where the fight between good and evil begins. Once it sinks into our thoughts and we've established a pattern of thinking about something, it begins to sink down into our heart and it's very difficult to remove it. But the beauty is, when it comes to purifying our mind, when it comes to purifying our heart, we are not alone. God did not leave this up to us to say, all right, you find the inner strength and you do it yourself. God's word simply says we just need to ask. We need to confess our sins, confess what is wrong, and he is faithful. He will clean out our heart. We need to ask and his Holy Spirit will be given to us to renew our minds. I met a guy recently who talked about the conversion experience he had when he came to Christ and the violence and the drugs and, and just the horrible life he was living and the instincts that he had to do these things. And he just shared the testimony as he came to Christ, there was something healed in his mind. And he doesn't think those ways. It's not those patterns anymore. And he was set free. Now, I got to tell you, there's some things in my life when I was young that I dabbled in and, and messed around with. And some of them the Lord set me free from. I was very tempted when I was younger, but the Lord simply took those temptations away. But there's others that have been with me my entire life, or at least going way, way back. And those are the ones that I think the Lord knows that there's still a part of me that, you know, it wouldn't be temptation if I didn't like it. If it wasn't something that I was still, for whatever reason, drawn to. And the Lord warns me and invites me, Tom, I'm not going to just remove it from you because I want to see if you really love me more than that sin more than those birds that you're letting make a nest in your hair. So this is a bit of a heavy discussion today, but I invite you to really take a look at your thought life, at what you're putting into your heart and into your mind with the things you watch and the things that you read, with the conversations that you have with other people. And when you ask God to forgive you, ask him to give you a clean heart. Ask God to purify your mind and your thoughts because he is able and he is faithful and he loves you. God bless your day and God bless you as you think and ponder about these things. Amen.